day. I am Lady J, and I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to what I feel is one of the best churches on this side of heaven. Sure, I might be a little bit biased, but I want to welcome you to what we affectionately call ABC, Abyssinia Baptist Church. I want you to know that you are most certainly welcomed here at ABC. Whether you are worshiping with us here in the sanctuary or whether you are worshiping with us online, I want you to know that I am so grateful that you are a part of our worshiping service. Whether it's your first time sharing with us or whether you are consistent or you are part of our ABC Nation, we are so grateful that you are connected with us and that you are growing with us. One of the things that we aspire is to continue to grow as disciples, to continue to grow in God's word. And that is one thing that we truly focus on here at ABC. And so we want to keep that in the forefront. And while we're doing that, there are several different ways that you can connect with our ministry. We have Facebook, we have YouTube, you can put the service on, you can display it right there in your home, right on your phone. You know I gotta put that little plug in about, you know, the Android users and the Apple users. It wouldn't be me not to say something about it. Have to do that, but however you choose to view the service, do it. But I had to mention the Android, Apple users. Apple users are still the best phones. But anyway, we have YouTube, we have our website, we have so many opportunities again for you to connect. We just want you to get connected now. You know, lean in, I have to do this. You have to do what? Take the opportunity to share. You have to share, share, share. We want to share our worship experience. We want to share the opportunities to connect, to grow, and to be a part of our church. So go ahead, even if you're in our worship experience now or whenever you're sharing, make this time, take this time to share our worship experience. Again, we are so grateful. We are so excited that you are sharing with us, that you are worshiping with us. And if you are worshiping with us online, if you are ever in the Norfolk area and you have the opportunity to stop by and worship in person with us, we would love to have you. Make sure you stop by, say hello, speak to me, speak to pastor, if you ever get the opportunity to connect with us in person. Again, thank you for worshiping with us. We are so grateful that you are here sharing with ABC. I'm Pastor Sheridan Nelson, and again, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to worship and thank you for being a part of our growing community and being a part of ABC Nation. Listen, here at ABC, our mission that we have for our ministry is simply to make disciples that will love God love his people and ultimately serve the world. And I want you to join us in that growing mission to help transform the world, to make our world a better place. Our vision is an exciting and compelling vision that I need you to partner with us to help ensure that we're impacting the world for Jesus Christ. Our vision here at ABC is to develop believers and give people a place to belong so they can can become all that God has purposed for them to become. And as a result, we will build healthy families and strong communities. So again, I want to invite you to partner with us in our mission, partner with us in our vision to impact our world for Jesus Christ.
One of the clear indications of a heart that has been transformed is now your hands become open and it leads to a generous heart. I wanna encourage you even now as we're preparing for worship this morning to prepare your gift to God. Many of you give throughout the week and you use and take advantage of all of the platforms that we have available to make giving easy. I wanna encourage you as you are preparing for worship now and many throughout the course of the week to become a tangible giver to the things of God. One of the ways we demonstrate our love for God is through our support for and through the local church. So I wanna encourage you now, even as you're preparing for worship, is to go ahead now and prepare your offering to give. Thank you that for those of you that tithe faithfully and consistently, and you support this mission and this ministry of us transforming our communities and having global and national impact. It is through your giving that it makes it all possible. And I wanna thank you for your gifts and for your support and for the ways that you generously serve here in this local ministry. And thank you to all of our ABC Nation partners, those of you that are abroad, but you support this ministry, you tithe and you sow and you give. And I wanna say thank you for your support. So even now as we're preparing for worship, you see there on your screen, all of the ways you can give now, whether it be on our website, through our push pay texting, as you see the number there, that is available or if you want to set up an automated payment where it automatically drafts each pay period there are so many ways that you can become a faithful and general supporter of this ministry and this work so thank you let's get ready for worship and again let's continue to impact our world for Jesus Christ Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we've come to rejoice in it. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? There you go. There you go. There you go. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, let's do even better than that this morning and give our God some praise today. Amen. He is worthy of our praise. Let me invite you to stand this morning as we're preparing our hearts and minds for worship today, let's just take a moment this morning as we prepare the atmosphere for worship this morning. Why don't you just take a moment and with hands extended to God and just take a moment and just tell God, thank you. Thank you that he let you make it through another week. Amen, somebody. For those that are joining us online this morning, as you're entering into the virtual sanctuary today, come on, let's just, with the fruit of our lips, just welcome the presence of the Lord in this place today and invite him on our roll into our hearts that whatever God wants to do in this place today, his glory will be achieved in this place. Amen. It starts with us just giving him a grateful heart. A thankful heart. Amen. Thank God you made it through another week. And just give him a gratitude and thanksgiving. Father, we honor you and we thank you for another week's journey. You've kept us all week long. And for that, God, we say thank you. And now, God, you've allowed us to assemble ourselves in your sanctuary. And we've entered in with grateful and glad hearts. Father, for those that are on the way, give them safe passage this morning. For those that are already here, open our hearts, open our minds that, that we can receive and give you praise, God. Be magnified, be glorified. For those that are at home, in cars, at work, that are joining us all across this country, Father, I thank you now for this corporate gathering. And may you be pleased with the songs that we sing, the word that goes forth, the worship and the fellowship. Be glorified, be magnified, and enlarge yourself in this place now in Jesus' name. And we all say together, amen. Come on all over this room. Give God praise. 
You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Listen, I'm so excited today on our first Sundays when we gather that we have the opportunity, amen, to celebrate in the spiritual birth and transformation of those who are being added to the kingdom of God. And I'm so excited for one of our young daughters today, amen that is getting baptized young Chelsea Ford ABC can you just give us some love right now amen and her mother is with her today and let's just celebrate God today as she has on her own said that she wanted to be baptized and is at the point now where she knows she believes in God and she wants it as an expression of her own faith to be baptized today. So y'all, let's help her get over her nerves this morning and let's just love on her and show her some love this morning. Amen. As she prepares to be baptized today. says amen come on church give the lord praise all over the house today yes yes come on give god praise everybody the bible says heaven rejoices over one i dare you to make some noise in the house today is anybody ready to praise the lord in this place today look at somebody next to you say neighbor i don't know what you come to do but I've come to praise the Lord. Come on, put those hands together all over the house. Let's receive our work team now. Hallelujah. Can we stand to our feet all together? Hallelujah. And let's prepare ourselves for worship. Hallelujah. One more time, clap your hands all over the room and give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus this morning. For he is worthy to be praised. Anybody got to thank you in your spirit this morning? Come on, just lift your hands to heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let me see you clap your hands up.
would just sing just that real softly for me as we prepare to pray today with the heart of thanksgiving I will bless thee O Lord as we prepare to pray today I want to invite you to the altar this morning for those of you today that have special prayer needs and special prayer concerns I want to invite you to the altar today as we prepare to give our concerns to God I will bless thee, O oh Lord, with a heart of thanksgiving. With a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless, I will bless thee. Oh Come on, everybody, lift your voice and say, oh, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Come on, one more time. Put it in the atmosphere. I will bless thee, oh. I will bless thee. I will bless thee, oh Lord. Yeah. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, oh Lord. As heads are bowed all across this sanctuary, for those of you that are worshiping with us online today, whatever your prayer need is, Whatever your prayer concern is, just begin to just list it right now in, in the chats, whether you're on our website, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook. Just begin to list your prayer concerns now as we come to touch and agree today in whatever we need from God today. However we need God to move. You notice the song just finished singing with the heart of thanksgiving. So even as I'm preparing to make my request known to God, I have to begin this prayer time and this prayer focus with adoration, with thanksgiving. Yeah. So right now, right where you are, right as you're standing today, just begin to give God adoration. Begin to give God thanks. And just begin to just open up your mouth. You you can't thank him in silence you gotta say something you gotta say something and start by just telling God how awesome he is get an adjective in your mouth and just begin to just tell him how awesome he is how wonderful he is there you go there you go with the fruit of your lips come on God you're wonderful God, you're mighty. God, you're strong. God, you're big. And we just adore you right now. Ooh, we magnify you. We exalt you. We lift you up. We make you bigger than anything we're going through or facing right now. So we say simply thank you. Thank you that you've kept us this first month of this year. Thank you that we've made it through January. Thank you that you've provided, you've made ways, and we simply say thank you right now. I thank you for the roof over my head, the clothes, the resources, the job, the ability to go to school. I thank you, God that you've made ways and you've kept us and we say thank you right now we are grateful and we're like David right now if we had 10,000 tongues we still couldn't praise you enough but with the one that we have we give you the fruit of our lips now God you already know every need you already know every concern you already know every burden that's at this altar. You already know every weight. You know every worry. You know the things that's making us anxious right now. And Father, we give it to you now. Because God, you're much bigger than us. You're much stronger. You're much wiser. So we cast our cares upon you. Now thank you for being our friend. 
Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for being our mighty power. And so we turn to you now. So God, for every financial need, we know you're making ways now. For sickness in the body right now, God, we know that you are a healer. For the person that needs direction and wisdom this morning, Father, we ask that we lean not to our own understanding, but God, we will acknowledge you and we ask that you will direct our paths. So, Father, for the person who's at peace and has no issues or no worries today, thank you, God, for the season of rest that they're in right now in Jesus' name. So, Father, we know that you're moving. We know that you're working. We feel you're moving right now. So give us the faith that we need to trust you. Because just like you've done it before, just like you've done it before, we know that you're the God that will do it now. So in faith, we clap our hands. In advance, we begin to praise you. In advance, we begin to give you glory. In advance, we tell you thank you because we know you're already working it out. We know you're already moving. So we put down praise on credit today. In Jesus' name, we thank you because jobs are on the way. We thank you that doors are being opened and relationships are being mended. We thank you for our children, for our friends. We thank you that whatever we've asked you in prayer, we know that you're going to do it in Jesus' name. If you believe it, give him praise in the house today. Oh, yeah, give him praise. As you're going and you'll see, hug somebody, tell him he's working, he's working. Oh, yes, he is. That's right. Encourage somebody in Jesus. He's working. Yes, he is. If you know he's working, ushers, just give them a moment so, so we can let all the ones at the altar be seated so you'll know where the seats are. So just hold them up for a moment. Wow. They're making their way back to their seats. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Yeah, yeah, I can tell. It's good to see you in worship today. Amen. We want to take this opportunity right now. Let me say it again if I hadn't already. Good morning, ABC. We greet you today in the joy of the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. And we want to take this opportunity right now, right now, to welcome today um, any guests that we have. Maybe it's your first time worshiping with us today. If you're here for the first time, trust me, I'm not going to embarrass you. I ain't going to make you say anything. But I just want you to raise your hand wherever you are so our ushers can see who's in the house today. Amen. Amen. Keep them up. Keep them up real quick. They're bringing a connection card to you right now. I would love for you to fill out that connection card and then during the offering time if you would be so kind to just drop that connection card in the offering plate and we would love for the opportunity to be able to connect with you later. Amen. I'm looking I'm looking for some special guests today. Do I have any Norfolk State students in the house today? Amen. Y'all made it to church. Amen. I'm glad to have y'all. Welcome to ABC. Delighted to have you. NSU in the house. NSU in the house, NSU in the house. We're delighted to have you worshiping with us this morning. Thank you for the, taking the time to come and worship with us and all of our guests that are worshiping with us today. Let's, let's take a moment to say good morning to everybody around us. Make, make sure you give them your name. Make sure you know who you're worshiping with today. Amen. All over the sanctuary. Before I get into the things that I want to push for this week, there's a special birthday shout out. Um, I saw y'all dropping your birthdays online for all of our February birthdays. All the February birthdays in the house. Y'all holler back at your boy. All of, the, all of the February birthdays. Amen. Why don't y'all stand? Everybody got a birthday in February. Let me see who all the February. Oh, yeah. We want to know who we partying with. Happy birthday to all the February birthdays and our very own mother, mother, mother blow turn 81. Amen. Mother Blow, amen. 
81 looking good, amen. And we praise God for all of you and happy birthday to all of our people that got birthdays this month. Enjoy, party hard, party hard and enjoy yourself for your birthday, amen, somebody. Listen, a couple of things I just want to push for this week that's taking place in the life of our church. Um, we have much that is going on, but a couple of things I just want to emphasize um, for this this um, this 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 week. Listen, I was so delighted, man. I mean, I, that noonday Bible study, they are rocking hard at noonday. Amen. You need to come and get in and what God is doing on in noonday. If you're able to, if you're at home or want to come on your lunch break for one hour, they come together to study the word of God. And so we encourage you to come and be a part of what God is doing in our noonday Bible study. And um, we're working. We'll be um, within the next several weeks. Y'all be on the lookout for our Bible study that I will be launching online. And you'll be hearing more about that. That will be coming soon. So we're excited about that. That will be coming soon for all of you that can't make it to noon, but we have something special that we're putting together, so more information will be coming out about that. Our Valentine's party for our children is coming, um, and so we want to encourage you today. Somebody say today. today. It's the last day to register for the Valentine. Um, it, today is the day. Don't call the church tomorrow. Don't call tomorrow. Today is the day. The day is the cut. The day is judgment. The day is cut off. After the day, there'll be no more registrations um, for our children's Valentine's party um, for our fifth grade and under. It's going to be in a great time, and I'm excited about the plans that we have um, for our children's Valentine's party. Then also on um, next Saturday, somebody say next Saturday. Next Saturday, we'll gather for morning glory, our prayer, 9 a.m. We look forward to, yeah, there you go. It's, I'm telling you, it's nothing like being in the house on that Saturday morning. So put it on your schedule. Meet me here, 9 a.m. on next Saturday. We come together corporately to pray for one hour um, from 9 to 10 or whenever the Holy Spirit lets us loose. Um, but get here and get in the building to be a part of what God is doing in that intercessory prayer time. It's going to be amazing. Then on next Sunday. Next Sunday is Super Sunday. It's Super Sunday. We want you to come rocking your favorite NFL team if you got one. Um, it is Super Bowl Sunday, so we're rocking our NFL gear, our favorite team, whether we made it or not. Amen. Um, so all you Redskin fans, Dallas fans, um, Brother McKinney, you can wear your Viking stuff on that day. Uh, um and we got one Detroit Lions fan in the back. They almost made it. That's the only Detroit Lions fan I know in the world um, is that one in the back. Marcus uh, working our media. Um, and so y'all rock y'all gear on next Sunday. It's going to be fun. Bring a guest. Bring a guest. Bring a guest. For the person who brings the most guests, you want to bring them because we got some special stuff that we have for persons that are bringing guests on next Sunday. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and we look forward to having you in worship. Choir rehearsal um, is the this month, I believe that is on the 13th, and so we're excited about our mass choir um, that is coming together, so make sure um, if you would like to be a part, want to be a part, come to choir rehearsal on that day, and it's going to be a tremendous time. I'm looking forward to them blessing us in a tremendous way. Listen, as we're preparing for Lent, the 40 days of uh, uh, that leads up to Easter, listen, that's going to be a special time. And I want everyone, we are declaring the next 40 days that will begin on Valentine's Day, February 14th, kicks off Lent um, for that 40-day journey leading up to Easter. And then we'll be releasing in the next couple of weeks our fasting plan and the things that we are committing to over the course of the 40 days. But I want everybody to go ahead and go online and wherever you buy your and purchase your books from. And I want you to get the book entitled Sun Stand Still by Stephen Furtick. I want you to order the book, download the book. That's going to be our read over those 40 days. And we'll be doing some special things in terms of coming together, sharing from that book and talking about that book. And we're declaring this 40 days open heavens. Amen. We're believing that God is going to open the heavens. The heavens are already open, but we're going to tap in over the next 40 days, over this period of Lent. And we're believing God. God for miracle signs and wonders, amen, to be released on the body of Christ as we commit to God over the next 40 days. Anybody ready to tap into some open heavens, amen? 
Do you need something special from God, some God that works some miracles in your life? Well, we're going to believe God over the 40 days, and I want you to make sure you get the book, um, Sun Stand Still, um, and we'll be kicking that off over the course of this week. We're excited that we will be having um, a new ushers group that will be starting um, this year. So we, our youth ushers, amen, somebody give God praise for our youth ushers. And so we're encouraging you, parents, to um, make sure you sign up our children ages seven and up. Um, I don't how Christian, how old are you, Christian? Oh, well, Chris, you made you make the cut, Christian. Christian, you make the cut. You make the cut. Christian makes the cut. Um, so six and up, six and up, six and up, six and up. Um, for our youth ushers, make sure you sign up. You can sign up after church out front. Parents, we're organizing this. They will start out ushering on fifth Sundays. And so we want to make sure we get a strong youth team, um, our children's team, that will be ushering and serving. Many of them have acts, and we're excited to be able to offer this. Somebody praise God for our young people. Amen. Amen. So please make sure you sign up for that today. Amen. As we prepare to worship God through giving this morning, I want you to turn in your Bible, go to your phones to 2 Corinthians 9 and 11. 2 Corinthians 9 and 11. Let's get this in our spirit, or you can turn your attention towards our screens as well as we're preparing to give today. 2 Corinthians 9 and 11 says this, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion, and through your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. And the church says, amen. Listen to the word of God again. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. I want you to understand as Paul provides this powerful lesson to the church of Corinth as it relates to their giving, the important thing I want you to understand today and get in your spirit, every opportunity that we have to give and to worship God through giving, what God is ultimately trying to do, he's trying to accomplish this. God gets to you what he can get through you. I want you to just remember that. God gets to you what he can get through you. God blesses us and God gives us resources because ultimately God believes that he can trust us with those resources to be faithful and good stewards over those resources. See, what you must understand when it comes to giving and honoring God with your gifts and your tithes and your offerings, that there is a deep connection between wealth and opportunity. There's a connection between wealth and opportunity. Every dollar that passes through our hands is a transfer, a transfer of power, and how we use that power is something that shapes us for the better or for the worse. It's a transfer. It's a transfer of power. So that's why we see many images of this. If you watch TV or you scroll on YouTube or Instagram, or maybe you've even been in some settings where you've been up in the club and somebody comes up in the club and they're just throwing money in the air, right? Right? Because they're trying to show you their baller. I think it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. One video I saw where these dudes were in the club and they were pouring out all of this expensive liquor. They were just pouring out liquor, just pouring it out, just not drinking it, just pouring it out. Trying to be impressive, right? Look at somebody say, that's just so, so dumb. Trying to impress trying to show that they are ballers, right? Mismanaging, I don't care how much money you have, it's a mismanagement. Are y'all with me? Because what God calls us to be are faithful stewards of the resources that he entrusts to us. And God won't bless you with more 
if you don't prove you're a good steward of whatever he's entrusted to you. It's about faithful management. It's about faithful stewardship. And God says this, that when you prove that you can handle more, when you prove that you'll be a faithful steward of more, then I will bless you with more. <laughs> yeah. How many want to be blessed with more? It's nothing wrong with that. I hope you do. I hope you do. Because what I understand is the more God blesses me with, you know what that does? That gives me more opportunity to be able to bless others. So listen to the scripture again as we get ready to get Listen to what God says over you. This is what, as Paul gives this word. You will be made rich in every way. Watch this. Somebody say, so that you can be generous on every occasion. See, God already knows your heart. God knows you want to you make a difference. You, you want to be a blessing. You want to be helpful. You want to sow and you want to give because there's so much good in you. He knows that. And he wants to bless you in every way. He wants to bless you in every way. Somebody, as we can pre prepare to give and pray today, just declare that over your life and say, God wants to bless me. And God, I want to be blessable. So as we prepare to give and sow today, Father, help make us good stewards. Help make us faithful stewards over everything you've entrusted to us. And as we prepare to worship you through giving today, God, we give with grateful and glad hearts. Receive our offerings and our gifts now. In Jesus' name. We say together, amen. If you need an envelope today, if you need to, a physical envelope, just lift your hand now. Our ushers will bring you an envelope. Lift them up so they can bring them to you. Amen. Let's take out our phones now as we prepare to give. For those of you worshiping online, as we prepare to give today, the information is on the screens there. Let's take out our phones now and let's prepare to sow and give our offerings today. For those of you that have physical cash and envelopes, once you've prepared your offering, just stand right where you are. There are two baskets in the aisle. There's one up front and there's one towards the back. Just step out in the aisle right now and bring your offerings and drop them in whatever basket is closest to you today. As we're giving our offerings this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your sowing this morning. For those of you giving online, thank you for your gifts today, for your partnership with us. hands together. Let's thank God for our offerings this morning. Let's receive our worship team today.
for me. Ooh, I can say.
best thing that ever happened to you. Jesus is the only reason you're still here. Jesus is the only reason we're still standing. He's the very best thing that could have ever happened to me. Why don't you lift your hands and say, Jesus Christ is the way. I could have gone left, I could have gone right, but Jesus Christ is the way. Jesus Christ is the way. There's no addiction that's greater than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way. There's no habit that's greater than Jesus Christ. He's the way. There's no person that's better than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way. Somebody's lost. Somebody's confused. Somebody's in a dark place right now. And I want you to know you can't get out by yourself. Jesus Christ. Somebody got some tough decisions to make this week about your life and the future of your life. But I want to let you know, just trust God to lead you. There's some parent today that's facing some tough decisions about your children, your career. You're going to doctors and you're listening to all of the stuff that they're saying and you're confused. But I want to let you know Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Just ask God to lead you. Just ask God to guide you. Come on, last time, everybody. Lift your hands and say, Jesus Christ. Just give him worship right here. 
Come on, give and worship. Hallelujah, God. He's the way. Hallelujah. I want to invite you to stand all over the sanctuary. presence of the Lord is in this place. The glory of the Lord is resting in this house. That's why you got to get to church. <laughs> I, listen, I want you to know there's such a glory in this church. There's such a the glory of the Lord rests in this place. One of the things I've always loved about ABC is the openness to worship. It's always Teresa from the early days, Mother Blow. There's always been a glory that rested in this church. And one of the things that I've appreciated is even through the various ages in the seasons and generations that our worship has continued to be authentic. Amen. And, and, and there's a weight of his glory that rests in this church. And that's because our openness. Amen. Somebody say open. Regard. What I love about the fact that you can come in here and there's a multi-generational church from seniors to college students to young adults and we come and we're open to how God wants to move and we're open to that sense of his glory and the sense of his worship that's why I impress one of the best ways to start your week is getting in this house amen 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 and so I love to look out and I love to see men that are here that are worshipers. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't do more shouting and praising for my football or basketball team than come in the house of the Lord and get quiet. And so you got the, the voices of the men that are worshiping and the voices of the seniors. And so if you can't even stand, you got somebody next to you, all you can do is just lift your hand. Because it's nothing like being in his presence. It's interesting, AJ, this week, I've literally had preachers and people calling me this week because a worship clip has gone viral from our worship. And people have been calling me all week and, and they've been saying, man, y'all got amazing worship. Y'all got amazing worship. What y'all doing over there? Y'all got amazing worship. I said the church was founded on that. And we've just been able through the generations to adapt and cultivate through, through the music and the genres. And being able to adapt and we're able to be open to the move of God. And that's why you don't understand just being in this atmosphere every week. What's that doing to your mentally? What's that doing for you mentally? What's it doing for you spiritually? And what it's doing for you physically? So that's why you got to make it, you got to make, have a sense of urgency. Let me say this. Let me just add this while I want you to turn to 1 Chronicles 28. That's why you got to get here on time. Right? Look at somebody and say, I got to do better by getting on time. Because you can't afford to miss the beginning of worship. All right? Can I, can I help? Can y'all listen to your pastor? This ain't the club where I come late and fashionably late, you know? Right? So I got I to gotta shift from that mindset. You know, you know what time the party start? What time the club? And then you say, well, okay, we're we going to get there when it start jumping. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I know, I know about that. I've been there, got, been there, done that, right? You're going to wait till it get 
jumping and wait till the crowd get there and then you're going to make your interest with you and your crew. But when it comes to worship, you got to be here at the beginning. You got to be here for praise and worship because that praise and worship gets you in the heart and the mindset and open and in the posture so you can receive the word. Amen. Y'all listening to me? So I got to put a sense of urgency in me to get on time to be here at the beginning. So as the songs of Zion are being sung and the corporate voice and the corporate sound is being established for that day, I got to be here so I can be in that, to sense that with what God is doing and speaking and to be a part of that. And y'all, we ain't in church long, so you, you come late, you done miss half the service. Are y'all with me? Today we conclude Big Dreams. It's the last sermon in this series we've been in this month, Big Dreams. Somebody say Big Dreams. On next Sunday, our, our theme for this year is building our future. And so I'm answering that question, how do we build our future? I'm answering that through every series. And it starts with Big Dreams. Starting next week, We'll be in a series entitled Bold Prayers. That in this season, if you're going to build your future, you got to learn how to pray bold prayers. And we'll be looking at various ones throughout the Bible because i got to pray some bold and dangerous prayers in this season of my life and believe God for the things that he wants to do in my life. So today we conclude, and I want to invite you to 1 Chronicles 28. First Chronicles 28, we go to another excerpt in the life of David. And I just want to read this. If you're joining us for the first time, I encourage you to go on YouTube and catch some of the other sermons in this um, series, this four-part series. Um, First Chronicles 28, I just want to, for the sake of reading, read verse 2 of First Chronicles 28. It says this, Then King David rose to his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. I had it in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and had made preparations to build it. That's all I want to read. Then King David rose to his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. I had it in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the footstool of God and had made preparations to build it. I, today I want to tag this text and I want to talk about today dreams that last. Dreams that last, you may be seated in the presence of God. It has been my prayer that through this series, you have been inspired and motivated to dream big. If you are a person that has allowed life's misfortunes and mistakes to kill your dreams, I hope that you have been encouraged through the life of King David how God can still be glorified through our mistakes that we have made in life. It is so powerful to see the grace of God in action in and through the life of David that God could use the biggest mistakes that history records in the life of David, the sin of Bathsheba, and as we learned on last week, the sin that he commits of numbering the people. And out of that, God uses David's life, David's son Solomon, whose mother is Bathsheba and builds a temple at the place 
where David ends up repenting of his sin of numbering the people. And God builds a temple through David's life at the foot of Mount Moriah. I'm encouraged by this that dreams do come true. While I know that Disney World and Mickey Mouse claim that they are the place that makes dreams come true. I want you to know this morning, I serve a God that has proven throughout history that whatever he begins to place in our hearts, he will bring it to pass. Isn't that good news? That somebody ought to just celebrate God right there and give God praise right there. That whatever God begins to show you, whatever God begins to reveal to you, I have, you have a God that specializes in bringing dreams to pass. And I want you to know today that he's showing it to you for a reason. He's putting it in your heart for a reason. And no matter where you are in life right now, no matter what mistakes you have made in your past, somebody ought to give God a praise today that dreams, he will still make your dreams come true. So here's the thing. So wherever your dream died, and no, no matter where your dream has stopped, for those of you in the room today that never had a dream in the beginning, let me challenge you this morning as we conclude this series to pick it up, to open your mind, open your heart, and ask God in this season of your life, what God is it that you got next for me? Ask God to give you a picture, to give you a plan, and slap fire with your neighbor and say, neighbor, go pursue it. Can I tell you, this is the season we must ask God for what is next. We must ask God to give us a picture. We must ask God to give us a plan, and then we got to pursue it. This is the season, church, that we must begin to dream big. And I want to know this morning, am I talking to any dreamers in the house today? Am I talking to anybody that's decided that you gonna dream again maybe you let your dream die and life has gone on and you put some ambitions and desires on the whole but this is the season that we dream and some begin to dream again and not only dream again we begin to dream bigger dreams than we ever have before because we serve a big God and I just want to check the house real quick this morning and see who I'm preaching to today are there any dreamers in the house today? Do you have big dreams? If you got big dreams, I dare you to give God praise right there and say, God, I got big dreams. There's one final element that I want to lift up. Several observations out of the life of David since we've been following him from chapter 17. There's one final lesson we need to learn in the process of dreaming big, and it can be found here in the 28th chapter in the life of David as Chronicle records it. As we follow David, and we've been following him since he stood out on the rooftop of his palace, and he saw and God purposed in his heart that as he was living in this palace, he looks out and sees that God is the presence of God and God is dwelling in a raggedy tent. And David had in his heart, David had in his mind that he wanted to build a temple for God on top of Mount Moriah. That was purposed in his heart in chapter 17. And we follow this when God comes and tells David, that David, you're not going to be the one that builds me a temple, but it's actually going to be your son Solomon 
Even with that, we learn that David was what? Still determined to see this dream that he was given come to fruition. We learn that dreams cost, don't they, church? And there's another lesson that we need to learn today. The lesson is this. Here's the big idea. Here's the thesis of the sermon for the morning. Is we're going to learn today the importance of not allowing our dreams to die when we die. Are y'all here? Here it is. The, the sermon in one sentence is this. We're going to learn the importance of not allowing our dreams to die when we die. See, the reality is most of us stop dreaming at the place when we have arrived at our destined place. And we fail to consider how our dreams will outlive us. So here's the question. What kind of legacy do you want to leave? Think about it. What kind of legacy do you want to leave? Let me ask it another way. How can God use us after we're gone? Are y'all here? Let me ask it another way. What could God do through you after you gone. That's called legacy. Somebody say it with me. Legacy. What is legacy? Let's define it real quick before we dive in. Legacy is creating something of value or significance that endures Beyond one's lifetime. Legacy is creating something of value or significance that endures beyond one's lifetime. Legacy, it can involve making a positive impact on people's lives, contributing to society, or leaving behind a body of work or a tree achievement that inspires future generations. Mm -hmm. Legacy. See, most of us, a lot of us, rarely entertain the conversation or the discussion or see themselves as leaving a legacy. And today, this whole series, Big Dreams, has been about the impact that God wants your life to have. Are y'all with me? See, some of us, we think so smallly of ourselves and we don't see what we can contribute or do or the impact we can have in a way that it will be significant for future generations. And that's why I'm telling you that you can't dream small in this season. God is calling you to dream big. Because the bigger you dream, the more, Jessica, impact your life can have. See, what makes us, we, we've turned these people in the Bible into some superheroes. Right? And we've made Abraham and Noah and all of these people and Sarah's and Esther's, we've turned them into superheroes. When in reality, 
They were ordinary people that opened up their heart and life to be used by God. And that excites me. That excites me because you know what that means? That there's an opportunity for each one of us to be used by God in an extraordinary way. And I want you to begin to think about it. That's why I want to impress this today, that, that each of us in this room have an opportunity to build and create a legacy. <laughs> Look at somebody and just ask them, what kind of legacy are you going to leave? So, so the question is today, how do you leave a legacy? Are y'all ready? How? I know, I know you came to church because you wanted me to answer that question for you today. Pastor, I want to leave a legacy. I, I want to, anybody want to leave a legacy? Yeah, yeah. You want to leave a legacy? You, you're going to leave one, one way or the other. One way or the other. So, so you might as well do something positive. You might as well do something constructive. Come on, talk to me, somebody. So how do we do it? Let's look at the life of David, and let's, let's lean in to see how we can do it. Let's, let's go back to verse 2 again, and let's see what David says. Then The text says, Then King David rose to his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren, my people. I had it in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant for the Lord at the footstool of our God. Here it is. Highlight this. Underscore it and had made preparations to build it. Do y'all hear what David says? David says, I made preparations to build this temple. That while I'm still alive, even though God told me I was not going to be the one to build it, I've made preparations for it to be built. Now, y'all, David in this season of his life, he's an older guy now. He's an older guy. God has told him he's not going to be the one to build it. But when God gives David the dream in chapter 17, David had a dream of something that would go beyond his lifetime. Here's the first observation. If you're going you to leave a legacy, here's what you got to do. Write this down. Take this note. You must dream beyond the span of your years. See, I promise, when it comes to dreaming... Most of us stop at the place of seeing ourselves at arriving. Right? So you stop dreaming when you get the dream job. You, you see yourself getting to it. Are y'all with me? That, and that's where most of us stop. We, we stop at the, at the place where we arrive. We see ourselves getting to the place. Whatever that looks like for you, we see ourselves getting to the place. And that's all we see. We see the house. We see the crib. We see the job. We see the bank account. We see how we living. We see how we balling. And we see ourselves, whatever that looks like for you. And that's where we stop. And I want you to understand that that ain't the end. And that is not the end all of why God is showing you that. Because if it is, then all of that is for a self-serving agenda and ambition. No, no, no. Why God is even putting it in your heart is bigger than you. Mm. 
the office he's going to give you and take you to is not just about you arriving, but it's about you swinging the door open for others that you will be able to bring through. Oh, God. And the impact you're going to have, it ain't just about you just arriving and being blessed. No, God is going to do some stuff in your life that's going to impact your life and future lives. Do y'all receive that for what he's going to do through you? And that's why if, when you start thinking about legacy, you have to start dreaming beyond the span of your years. You got to start dreaming beyond that. Listen, go to Proverbs 13, 22. The word of God says a good man, or in some translation it says a good person leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Do you see how many generations that impacts? A good person, a good man, a good woman leaves an inheritance to his children's children. That verse is about legacy. It's, it's about legacy, speaking legacy. It's about keeping our life's goal, our vision, and our future in front and center when we are making choices today. Young people, young adults understand the choices that I'm making today has future implications on my tomorrow and not just my tomorrow, the others that are connected to me tomorrow. There's a cycle that implies to leaving a legacy. It is about y'all having generational impact. It's, it's the beginning. It's the beginning of, of what down through the years, the names have changed, and now we call it African American History Month. Right? It's the beginning of that month, and we're all now living in space and time because of generational impact. Mm -hmm. Some of us now have choices to the schools we go to. Right? The generational impact, the body of work, the legacy that our parents and foreparents marched for. I can't get nobody to talk back to you now. Right? The blood, sweat, and tears because they had dreams of freedoms, of a better life that many of them fought for, gave their life for, but never personally benefited from. Are, are y'all here? And now, look at you, picking and choosing when you want to get up and go to class and go to school. Look at you now with your little job, with your little career. And now you done arrived at a place, but you didn't get there by yourself. Somebody went through the back door so you could... Through the front door. Don't, don't mess with me in here now. Because they dreamed of a better life for what? Their people, their children, and their grandchildren. Now, somebody going to talk back to your boy in here today? And now you can't arrive at the place on somebody else's back, on somebody else's shoulder, and then get there and get all cute and get all funny and then not do the same. It is about dreaming beyond the span of your years. 
That's what's powerful. That's what David does. David is dreaming beyond the span of his years. And I want to call and challenge every senior. I want to call and challenge every, every adult and every young adult to start dreaming beyond the span of your years and asking yourself the question, what kind of legacy do I want to have? Here's the second thing. First thing we got to do is we got to dream beyond the span of our years. And then when I look at verses 9 through 11, go there quickly. David shows us the second thing. Look at these verses 9 through 11. Look at what David says. And so David says, as for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart. Listen at this daddy talk to his son. And with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, listen how he's talking to him. Listen at what he's instilling in him. He will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Look at what he says in verse, keep going. Then David gave his son Solomon the plans for the best of you, its houses, its treasures, its upper chambers, its inner chambers, and the place of the mercy seat. What did David give him? Somebody said everything. <laughs> he gave him the plans. He gave him the plans. He gave him the architectural blueprint of what God gave him for what the temple would look like. And he just didn't give him a set of plans. If you keep on reading in that chapter, you will read and see all the gold and all the silver that David gives to Solomon. But do you see what he tells him at front? He tells him what? Honor God. Love God. Are y'all with me? If you're going to leave a legacy, one, you got to dream beyond the span of your years. Then secondly, you must decide what you're going to leave behind. You must decide what you are going to leave behind. David wants to leave something that will honor God. Do you see what David passed down? David passes down to Solomon and instills in him a reverence and a value of God in his life. Whew. Oh, God. Parents, do you see what David passes down to his son? He passes down to his son reverence and value and honor for God. That's why you make everybody in your house come to church. Somebody who live under your roof, eat your groceries, soak up your electricity, Take baths and showers in the water you pay for. Clothes that you bought. It ain't no option. Because parents, hear me when I tell you, what you make optional, they will make obsolete. I'm going to say that again for the slow people in the room. What you make optional they will make obsolete when you make them come to church and you bring them not send them to church you instill in values and honor and reverence for God because you passing down something that 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 you hope and pray what you pass down will go from their generation until the next generation. Come on, talk to me, somebody. 
your values, your morals, your work ethic. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You are going to leave a legacy, and you got to be a good steward of what God has entrusted you to because you want to pass it on. If your parents raised you in church, or maybe some of you, it wasn't your parents. Maybe you're just getting into this thing for yourself, and maybe it was a friend, a co-worker, or an auntie, or an uncle, but I promise you this. There's no person in this room that has gotten here here by yourself. It was somebody that God put in your path that told you about Jesus. A friend, a homeboy, or a homegirl. Come on, talk to me, somebody. A grandmama or an auntie that kept telling you, child, I wish you get it together and get in church and, and love God and serve God. And somebody right now might be having flashbacks. Tears might be getting ready to roll up in your eyes, but take about five seconds and praise God for the person that led you to Jesus that told you about Jesus and guess what and now here you are and he's the lover of your soul but what you gotta do is pass it on and you gotta decide you gotta decide what you gonna leave behind You got to decide what you're going to leave behind. David makes a decision of what he's going to leave behind was something that was going to honor God, something that was going to reverence God. And he was going to leave behind the resources to get it done. And he passes this responsibility to Solomon. I want, man, I wish I had time. It, this, this is what building generational wealth looks like. This is what it means to set up the next generation. Oh, God. I wish I had time, but I got to get you out of here. I wish I had time. But I want you to get a picture of it. I pass parents, grandparents, this is what it looks like. And you, and you got to stop thinking about just getting to the point of death. You got a responsibility to think about how I'm going to impact after my death. So you got to decide now what's going to be done with your house. You got to decide now what's going to be done with your money. Oh, God. Look at some, Don't just die. Oh, oh, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just, just, just in case y'all didn't know this. You know you're going to die, right? I mean, I just, I just wanted to just let somebody know. I hope I didn't shock you too much this morning. But you know you're going to die, right? You know, you, you know you're going to die, right? You know you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die, and they're going to roll you across here. Right? That's, that's, that's in your future. And the reality is, some of you are closer now. See, I'm y'all scared of that. I mean, what? I'm... Huh? Now, don't none of us know when and how, but, but, but if just in the natural maturation, some of y'all close now. Some of you close. You're going to die. But you still have a responsibility after you dead. of how you steward over your resources. So your church need to be in your will. Uh. No, no, no. See, see, see. See, you think I'm being funny. 
I'm, I'm, I'm talking about impact beyond your years. See, some people, some, some ethnicities get this. That's why they have the church in their insurance policy. That, that this goes to my church. This property goes to my church. And so their church, the place that they supported all their life, can continue beyond and impact future generations to reach the loss. See, some ethnicities get this. So, so when you think about now that they're finally turning it into a residential facility, but Park Place Methodist around the corner was able to survive when it was only a few people there because of the foundation of what other generations had left the church. So they could stay and it is only a handful and survive because of the investment that future generations had left them. And you got to decide now what you're going to leave behind. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. So my life is called not only to impact my son's life, but a part of my responsibility and Jody's responsibility is to set up their children's life. Don't rush that. Don't rush that. Are y'all with me? Look at somebody and tell them, decide now. What you're going to leave behind. I'm going to close with this. Verse 20, verse 28, chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. Let me show you this. Are y'all getting this? Here's the last thing. All this, I'm reading verse 19. All this, David, all this said, David, the Lord made me understand in writing. David says, I put it in writing by his hand upon me. All the works of these plans, David said to, to his son Solomon, be strong and of good courage and go do it. Do not fear nor be dismayed for the Lord God, my God, will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you until you have finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Here it is. When I dream big and my dreams outlast me, I will dream beyond the span of my years. And that's why I got to decide what I want to leave behind. And here's the last thing. My dreams will make a difference for the next generation. See, here's the powerful thing that I want you to see. <laughs> Vanessa, Brother Morris, what David did and the dream he had impacts the future generations of Israel. And he gives them a plan, a blueprint, a strategy and resources and then he gives them the responsibility he passes it on he leaves it Domena, for them to carry out and here is the thing I want to tell you Solomon was able to build the temple in seven years Yes. <laughs>
seven years. See, you can't appreciate the magnitude of the project. He didn't have to raise the money. He didn't have to come up with the plan. His daddy already had bought the land. he has to do is be a good steward and go do it. Here's what I want to tell you. Here's what I want to tell you. Grandparents, let me see your hands. Let me, let me see. Let me see. Parents, let me see your hands. Anybody? All right. Okay, put them down. All right. I want you to understand something. For those of you that's been in this church for years, here's the point I want to show you. Here's the thing I've come to understand this. Our responsibility is to give the next generation speed. Alan, our responsibility is to give them speed. What do I mean by that? That they should get there sooner. They shouldn't have to start from scratch. You had to take out student loans. Their education ought to be paid for. So when they graduate, they have no debt. How long it took you to save to buy a house? Your responsibility is to make sure they already have the down payment for theirs. My responsibility as a father is to give my son speed. William. It's to set them up in a way that they get there quicker than I do. And his responsibility is to be a steward over what I entrust to him. So it impacts his life and his children's life. We're standing. We're standing. We're standing. You're sitting in space that somebody else had to sacrifice for. That's why you got to be a good steward of your education. You're sitting in space, and you're going to get to places quicker. Some of you young adults, my students, you're going to get to certain places quicker than others. And you got a responsibility to be a good steward and to set up the next generation. A couple of years, well, during the height of the pandemic, somebody wrote me a letter over the height of the pandemic. And in that letter, it was a couple of pages, and me and my wife, we read it, and included in that letter was a check. A person got laid it upon their heart while we were in the pandemic, churches were closed, and they wrote me this letter, and in there was a check, and they said, take half of this and use it for the general expenses, but take the other half and invest it. And I was in the middle of, we were in the middle of the pandemic, I said, bro, we need all this. And they told me what fund to put it in and to invest it in. And I did. We took half and put the other half in this investment for the church. This person saw this. He said, I want, my dream is to see the church get to the point where it's not just operating hand to mouth. And Mother Blow, we took it and I 
had them set up the account and to put it in. And so I asked this person, I said, do me a favor. Could you run me a, perf a financial performer and take it out to about 40 years? And I want to see what this is going to grow into. And they ran it with the projections of the market. 40 years, I'll be 90-something years old. I won't be here. I won't be standing here at no 90. That devil is a lie. I will not be here. Somebody say, you might. No, I won't be here. I'll be like, I might still be living. Hopefully, I'll know my name and everything, and I'll, I'll be like my predecessor. I'll still call y'all names and everything. But here's the point, y'all. They took it out 40 years. Do you know in 40 years from that investment in whatever... 2022, whatever that was, would turn potentially into 8.5 million. <laughs> and I thought about it, I said, my God, the next pastor going to be sweet. <laughs> Whoa, we do this with on the, on the little budget we got. Christian might be the pastor in 40 years. Right? But do you, do, do you see? Now, this was a young adult who did this. This was, this, this was a young adult who did it. This wasn't. And just that one person will impact generations. Your dreams will outlast you. Every head bow as we prepare to close and commune today. Ask God now to enlarge your territory and give you a life that will outlast you. Thank you, Jesus. As every head is bowed, I want to extend an invitation to somebody. I want to let you know you can't do this without the Lord in your life right now. You need God. If you're in this room right now, I'm telling you, God has a life far better than you could ever think, ask, or even imagine for yourself. But first, it takes you to surrender your life to God and say, God, you alone know the plans that you have for me today. I'm tired of trying to live it up on my own and make it up on my own. God, I surrender my life to you. I want to be saved today. I want to rededicate my life to you. Today, God, I want to get in church. I need to be connected to a church. I need a pastor in my life. If that's you today and that's a decision that you know you need to make right now before we leave right where you are, just lift that hand and say yesterday I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Yesterday I want to rededicate my life or today I need a connection with a church. I need a pastor and I feel this is the place where God wants me to be planted. If that's you, just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. Lift your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. As we prepare to commune today, if you have not been served, if you were omitted when you came in and you need a set of communion, just lift your hand right where you are. Just lift your hand if you need a set. As we are preparing to commune, you can go ahead and begin to ready your communion this morning. We're going to call out some names. We thank God for how God is growing us today. Um, and as your name is called for persons who have completed new members class, you want to call them. Um, Lady J is going to call your name. Please come up front real quickly to receive your new members certificate as your name is called if you're in worship today. Good morning. We want to welcome to the ministry Nikita Powell. Nikita. Come on, ABC. You can do better than that. Let's welcome Nikita to the family. Come on up, little Miss Chelsea Ford. We welcome you. Has been connected since birth, but made the decision, and we officially welcome her into the faith. Brianna Harris. Brianna. Okay, she's not here. Okay, I was just making sure. And I'm, I'm hoping I'm saying the name correctly. Talita Brown. Talita Brown, come on up, yes. 
We want to take this opportunity to officially welcome you to the ABC family. We are the better now that you are here. And so some of you have already gotten connected and serving, and we are so grateful for that. We want you to continue to grow with us. We know that there are ministry, there are things that will continue to go forth because you have now become a part of the ABC family. So we welcome you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Come on, ABC, let's welcome our new members home. You are a part of the family. To God be the glory. You can go back to your seats now. Thank you. Amen. Let us now ready ourselves to commune together. Let's take the bread all over the house. And we sing one verse of this together. Wash me over again. Ask God to wash you and cleanse you. Say, wash me over again. Wash me over Wash me over again. In your precious blood. In your precious blood. Wash me over. Wash me over again. This is the body of our Lord that was bruised out on that cross for us. Today we take now and eat together. This cup today represents the blood of our Lord that was shed on that cross for the remissions of our sins. And we all take now and drink together. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we all say together, amen. Come on, let's stand all over the sanctuary. There will be baskets out at the front doors for you to leave those containers in. Let us stand as we prepare for the benediction this morning. We're all standing. Please don't leave them on the pew, on the chairs today. Let's look to the Lord for the benediction. Father, we thank you this morning for meeting us here. Our week is off to a great start because it has begun in worship. Now, Father, we leave out of this place today dreaming big in Jesus' name. Now may the peace, the power, and the presence of our God be with us until we meet again and all of God's people say together, amen. God bless you. Have an amazing week, everybody.